At first I didn't want to go into the inventory too much, because it only lasted a few seconds in the footage. But as I started digging, I kept finding more and more interesting details. So here it is, everything I could find. You're watching Zalapod Smashers. Let's start off with that awesome looking new outfit. That chest piece that Link wears on one side isn't random. It's called a chest guard and is used in archery. Together with arm protection, it keeps clothing from touching the bowstring and interfering with the shot. And doesn't the rest of the outfit also look like something Robin Hood would wear? Now, with such a specific look based on archery equipment, could this outfit maybe give bonus damage while shooting a bow? Or is it purely for aesthetics? Onto the stamina meter. The permanent stamina increase was easy enough to notice. I calculated that this outer circle is 40% filled, which might suggest we upgrade our stamina by segments of 10 or 20%. The temperature meter here shows us that the jungle is hotter than the Great Plateau. I'll talk a little bit more about heat later. Now let's go through the weapons. I gave them numbers just to make sure we're looking at the same thing. But let me start off by pointing out the number of item slots. At E3 we were limited to 8 slots, while here we see 10. That either means we can get more slots as we progress in the game, or Nintendo has increased the number for the whole game. Either way, with the huge variety of weapons in the game, it's good news. Item 1. A new sword. It's similar to the soldier's broadsword, a sword seen at E3 but also in this trailer. This new blade is a bit different close to the heft. It's also stronger than a soldier's broadsword. And if that doesn't convince you, they have different scabbards. This scene, the new sword. This scene, the soldier's broadsword. Definitely two different blades, apparently Nate changed his equipment in between shots. I checked to see if this is the same sword seen in the Jimmy Fallon footage, but that seems to be yet another blade. You can see the scabbard in this shot, and it's a design we haven't seen yet. The sword probably gives us a preview of what stronger weapons will mean to the gameplay. Bokoblins die after just one hit with the sword, whereas at E3 they took several hits. On to item 2, the two-pronged sword that we saw in the E3 reveal trailer. Now, this thing sure looks badass. It's one-handed, so it can be used with a shield. The blades seem to be shaped like lightning bolts. Normally I would speculate that this suggests electrical powers, which wouldn't be out of place in this uh, footage here in the jungle, but the E3 trailer doesn't show anything of that kind. Item 3, a torch. One of those items that are always good to carry around. Although, usually in Zelda, if there's a specific item you really need somewhere, you'll find it very close by. Item 4, a two-handed sword. We get a better look at this sword later in the footage. It reminds me a lot of this sword, which was used by the Dark Nuts in Twilight Princess. The rounded tip of the blade seems very specific and easy to recognize. In the Wind Waker, the Dark Nuts wielded huge blades with one hand, while Link would then use the same sword with two hands. I can imagine a Dark Nut or another big enemy wield this sword with just one hand and a shield with the other. There is one frame in the footage that gives us a detailed look at the new sword. It has this pattern on the blade, and are those snake eyes on the hilt? I could point out that the Dark Nuts have red eyes in many games but so do a lot of other enemies, so it doesn't prove anything. Now it could be coincidence, it doesn't have to be a blade by Dark Nuts, but if it is, oh man, that's gonna be cool. Dark Nuts have always been among the hardest enemies in Zelda. If you thought these enemies in this footage were tough and clever, wait until you run into a Dark Nut. I have to say that this blade looks very familiar to me, as if we've seen it before in some Breath of the Wild footage. I just can't put my finger on it, but perhaps you know what I mean, have we seen this blade somewhere before? Either way, item 5, Korok Leaf. Another one of those items that are good to carry around just in case. Item 6 is unknown, it seems to be a staff. Um, 
I'm starting to think that maybe it does magic damage, because 6 seems to be very weak for where they are in the game. But there's no way to tell. Now it's getting interesting, item 7, the lightning rod. I want to start out with this sentence, recommended to use, and then it cuts off. Well, everybody who plays Pokemon knows when electricity is recommended to use against water enemies. We see the Lizalfos use a lot of electricity, and this item description suggests the Lizalfos catch fish, so that would make sense, but it's just a guess. Sadly, we don't see the lightning rod in action, but we did see electric arrows, so let's talk a bit about those here. They have quite the visual effect, they pretty much light up the whole screen. We don't see Link getting hit without dying, but the way the electricity keeps moving around his body could suggest that it also has a stun effect. The same might be true for the lightning rod. In Skyward Sword, some enemies attacked with electricity and you are not supposed to use a metal shield against that. This would make a lot of sense for Breath of the Wild as well. The description of the lightning rod mentions its gem. What could that mean? Well, what about this? The item description for Topaz says, This rare yellow gem is said to contain electrical powers. In fact, we have seen three gems in the game. Ruby, Sapphire and Topaz. They correspond with the three magical arrows we know about. Fire, Ice and Electric. So if the descriptions of these gems mention that they contain elemental powers, it almost has to be related to the rods, the arrows or both. Just how? That's the question. What do you think? Will we be able to build our own equipment? Or do we have to go to a blacksmith for that? When more information emerges, I might make a separate video about it. Now the last thing I want to mention about the rod. Remember what a charged attack did with the fire rod at E3? I wonder what a charged attack with a lightning rod looks like. Could it be something like this? Now, item 8. It looks like a new bow. It's impossible to tell, but it could be a strengthened little bow that Link picks up later in the footage. Item 9. It's normal arrows. Boring. Item 10. The Shika arrow that we saw at E3 2014. People had been suggesting that it could be a rune instead of a physical item, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Link doesn't have any at the moment, which could suggest that they are as rare as they look. Then there are a few items to be found outside of the inventory. Item A, a metal shield. This seems to be the one from the E3 reveal trailer. It has the Hylian crest on it, and it looks like something left behind by a soldier. Item B, Enhanced Lizal Spear. The description says the Lizalfos use it to catch fish. Will we be able to catch fish in any unannounced ways? Item C, a different Lizal Spear. Link has this other spear equipped for a while, but we don't see him use it. He didn't have it on the inventory screen, so he probably picked it up from the Lizalfos who attacked him with it earlier. If that hit almost killed Link, it must be pretty strong. It does look more impressive than the Enhanced Little Spear. Item D. Spiked Moblin Club with a strength of 27. It looks too big to use with just one hand, like the clubs on the Great Plateau. A look at it, even the Moblin uses two hands to swing it. Now, there is something that I skipped when talking about item number 1. Did you notice this little symbol? I can't make anything else of it than two crossed swords. Because my analysis of this symbol will be a bit more speculative and open-ended than usual, I'll put it into a separate video. It should be up in a few days. Let's look at the material screen, because it has a few new things as well. Most interestingly, the screen for materials now extends to a second page, so to speak. In the E3 footage, I've only seen one page. But then there probably weren't enough materials to even fill the first page. Let's hope that the game keeps adding pages and there is no limit to the amount of different materials we can carry. Here we see some radishes and carrots. We might be able to pick them from the farming fields like the ones we saw in the village. 
this octopus tentacle could have dropped from an octorock if they are in the game. And the last thing to mention, this ancient spring is dropped by guardians as we already knew. I have a little theory that we might be collecting Sheikah items that let us rebuild ancient technology, but let's not talk about that now. To finish up, let's talk about the food screen. First up are some symbols that show temporary buffs. This blue arrow indicates a boost in movement speed. It was at E3, although we didn't see it much. We have seen this yellow heart many times. It stands for a maximum health boost. This symbol is new, but it's not hard to figure out. Compare it with this one, which stands for cold resistance. Then this has to mean heat resistance. And the recipe could contain something juicy like a lemon to keep Link hydrated. Then there are these purple sound waves. It's the symbol for an increase in stealth, as shown by this dish that was at E3. If you're afraid you won't remember this symbol, the purple waves correspond with the purple noise meter of the user interface. This lightning symbol seems to be new, I couldn't find it anywhere. Could it boost the resistance to electric attacks or something like that? The last thing I want to mention here is the top left dish. It suggests a lot of different fruits in the game. We can actually see a new kind of fruit in the gameplay, but more about that in the final part of the analysis. That was a lot to discover in just a few seconds of gameplay footage. Please let me know if I missed something interesting. Coming soon, the analysis of the rest of the gameplay footage. I hope you enjoyed this video, you've been watching Zelda Pot Smashers. <laughs>